All right, I know what you're saying. I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, you can't time block a notion. Wrong, you can't. Especially with that weekly view, you can definitely time block now. So if we go into a new page in Notion, first and foremost, I'm just gonna make this full width. And the whole goal of the system is trying to make a weekly calendar view that won't be perfect in comparison to like a Google calendar, but can keep you on track for doing what you need to do during the certain blocks of that day. First of all, let's start with a slash database and we're just gonna call it time blocking calendar. It's up to you if you wanna add a little icon. I know this would be pretty. I love making pretty icons. And we're gonna focus on a few different properties here. That's kinda all you really need. It's gonna be four simple properties. So first of all, I'm gonna clear out this tag property. It's always by default there, I never need it. Uh, we're gonna put a text property and we're gonna call this time block. And this is essentially gonna serve as what the reference point is for this time block. Then we're gonna use a date property. We're gonna call this time override. And then we're gonna use a created time. And then we're going to use something called uh, real time. We're gonna create a formula and I'm gonna rename this to real time, change the icon to this calendar. And then the formula for this is something that I use often and Essentially what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the recurring templates feature in Notion and utilize the fact that created time can be auto-generated, but a date property really can't. So this is a formula you should really learn for multiple purposes. So I'm going to go into this formula and put if and then empty, which essentially says what's ever next. If it's empty, uh, that would be the time override because that would be a manual time that you didn't put. So we close this parentheses off. So if this is empty, then we put an equals true right here. So if this function right here, this empty time override is true. So if there's nothing in this override property, then we're gonna use the created time. So we're gonna put then with the comma, type create, and then uh, click on that, and then it'll fill it out there. So if the time override's empty, and then the created time is what we're gonna use, but if it's not empty with another comma, we're saying that, then we're gonna use the time override. So basically, when I close this off with the final parentheses, it'll default to the created time, but then if I put something in, it'll it'll change it. So this is very nice for our purposes because what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the recurring templates feature to create a calendar that is like a time blocking system for us. So luckily, a text property in a template is also static. So we can make a little bit of a schedule here. And um, I'm gonna make a select property that's the final thing, which could just be used for reference. And this is just gonna be called schedule example. So I'm gonna copy the link to this and we're gonna paste this out and we're gonna go to a calendar view. And this is gonna be the actual calendar, right? And then with the new update notion, you can go once again to the three dots, change this layout from month to week. And then I'm gonna go once again to the three dots and show the property of the time block. So that text property shows, all right. So now we're gonna filter this to select is not schedule example. So I'm just gonna change this name to type, just to make it easy. And then we can add one more formula property to make it uh, easy for us to look at. So we do formula and then do day of the week. Let's do a formula property for the format date. And then we're gonna pick the real time property. And then after the format date, we're gonna put a little comma. So what we're gonna do is then put a quote and then D in lowercase here four times and then end the quote and close the parentheses. So this is gonna show the day of the week. So now in order to have like a time blocking example, we can just uh, duplicate this view and change it to example schedule. And rather than it being not example, we're gonna have it is example. And then we can still use a board view that is grouped by, you guessed it, the day of the week. So then we can use an example uh, here and we can uh, manually sort. So I'm just gonna take a couple different ones here. So these are all made on this Thursday, but say I made an example of, uh, you know, I'm just gonna duplicate this a couple times. I'm just gonna duplicate this a couple times. So we got a bunch of these, and then I'm gonna just time override it to, to every day of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and then uh, Saturday, and then make all these a schedule example. And then we can go here to the grouping and sort it so that it's uh, whatever your preference is, whether it be Sunday, start of the week, or we can go with Monday, start of the week. And then I like to also make this board a small size. And then that's pretty much the example we're gonna go with. And we can show the property of just time block. So say we wanted to make an example time block 
for the week, what we then do is we can plan it out in this example schedule. And then from there, we can create templates that recur on those days. So for example, just make it really easy for you. Um, let's go uh, workout and then time block would be from like 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. We can put an emoji here for like flexing. And then I wanna make this Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I'm just gonna duplicate this and slot it into Wednesday and Friday. Doesn't matter what week, cause this is an example schedule. And then on Tuesdays in the mornings, I'm gonna do recording video sessions. So uh, let's do record videos. I'm gonna do from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then pro tip, if you highlight this, you can also bold it. So you can bold any of these time blocks right here. So then let's add this. So we go video and let's duplicate that. And then let's turn this into with time override. Let's just pick a Thursday. All right, cool. On Thursdays, I'm gonna make sure that I call my mom. So call mom, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then we can sort this by uh, the time block and then uh, probably descending. Now we're not gonna have any sort of sorting here, so we're gonna have to manually do this, but we restructure it like that. So we're starting to see a time block system come into place. And I will point out that in all this system, it's not gonna be perfect and it's not gonna be sized like a normal calendar app, but it is better than nothing. So if you wanna try to have it all in one place, this is completely possible now uh, with recurring templates too. So then on Sundays, maybe I would also work out. So I'm gonna duplicate this and throw it on a Sunday and then maybe I would since I have a big house with a lot of grass mow the lawn and then make that from like 11 a.m. to 12 30 p.m. and then grass now for Monday through Friday I'm obviously gonna have to work so I'm gonna grab this I'm just gonna put work put a little emoji for a laptop and we're starting to have a, a whole week come into fruition here so we're gonna do 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. bold it and then you know sad face duplicate this a couple times hashtag working nine to five what a way to make a living not for long then we can take these work items and spread them out throughout the week to fit every day and then make sure as well that it's in the right order so i'm obviously going to call my mom at 7 p.m which is after 9 a.m and then i'm just going to fill out some other stuff uh so that we can get this example going for you guys because i think you get the point right you just like make a framework and then you work afterwards on said framework. So now that we have a sort of system here, what we then can do is make a new template for each of these. So for example, we could copy this time, right? Create a new template called workout. We paste this time block in here. So we're gonna call this workout, put a little flex icon. And then on the three dots over here, we just press repeat every week from so Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Wednesday, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And since it's the first thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press like 12, I'm gonna make this 1230 and press save. And the reason for that is in this calendar view, I'm gonna set the sort to be the real time. And you'll see why in a second. So basically now, since this calendar is going to be set to the real time, it's gonna be sorted when the automatic workout goes here by the order of the automated templates that we created it in. So since in this entire situation, the first thing that was created was workout, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we are setting that to in this every week be created at that time first. And then let's just duplicate this and make another one called record videos and remember this is from 7 30 a.m we do videos here and it's only on tuesdays thursdays and we can set this to every week and then just pick tuesday thursday get rid of the other days and then press save then after that obviously we're going to work monday through friday from 9 a.m and since that's the case we're going to do work put a little laptop and then we're going to change the time from 9 a.m 5 p.m but the key thing here is we're going to make sure that obviously we need to set it to the right days but more importantly than that, we need to set it to after the first block. So we're gonna to need to make sure that it sets to like 1 a.m. So it's created automatically after that because of how our sorting works. And then obviously I can quickly set up the other ones like if we do the mow the lawn, I'm just gonna duplicate this and put mow the lawn, put grass, and make sure it's set to 11 a.m. and then 12.30 p.m. Then all you gotta do is make sure it's set to the right day and then it's set after whatever your workout time was and i know the workout was set early but i'm just gonna move it forward later in the day as well and then i'm gonna obviously call my mom so if you don't do that i don't know what's wrong with you to be honest 7 p.m to 8 p.m call that 
wonderful woman on the phone. Make sure the time is set correctly. Based on the day, it'd be a Thursday. Let's move it to something later, since probably there will be more things that'll get filled in in your time block. Then lastly, let's duplicate this one and do hang out with my friends, if I had any, single tier. And then we'll set this to 5 p.m., 9 p.m., to 10 p.m. Then make sure that it's on the right day. And that would be on Saturday. So now fast forward to how this will work. This is what your time block would look like. It would auto-populate items that are not schedule examples onto your calendar on these different days. Now it's not the most ideal system, but you have this or you have board view options in Notion now. So you have more than one way to time block. I'm really hoping that they get to the synced database system that we've been so much longing for in Notion and that we don't have to do this like weird backwards thing. Obviously this can now be hidden or I would just turn it into a page by doing turn into page. Like it's nice that we have this, but also how nice is it? Because we really want what we really want. And it's like this close, it's this close. Just like you're this close to checking out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.